how do I get a start in the wine industry? Um, there seems to be a bit of like a lacking of real workable, pragmatic uh, information as to like just how to get a foot in the door and um, and how do you go about it. So considering I'm in a really sick apartment here in Dusseldorf right before I head out, I thought it was a good enough set as, as any to, to give you guys a bit of advice. Straight into it. Uh, we thought with, there's sort of, I guess, three ways at which you could get uh, your foot in the door uh, in the wine industry and in, in a broad sense. You've got production, you've got hospitality, and then you've got this sort of other sort of offshoot area uh, called sales or wholesale marketing. And within that, you're really looking at stuff from, from basically the vineyard into the winery, what goes on between the winery and getting it to market, and then from the market, getting it into a consumer's hand. So my background's in winemaking uh, and in the production side of things. So the easiest way that you can get involved in production is to go and do a harvest. That is by far the best experience, the best thing you can possibly do, in my opinion, is to go and do a vintage at a winery, uh, ideally uh, for the whole season, not just like a week here or two weeks here. You really want to be working there for a solid eight to 12 weeks. Um, now you've got, of course, a split between Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere wineries. Northern Hemisphere, you know, USA, France, Spain, Germany, they all tend to have vintage or that harvest period happens at the same time. Uh, around about sort of August, September, October. Uh, and then Southern Hemisphere, of course, we've got Australia, New Zealand, uh, Chile, uh, Argentina, South Africa. And that's usually from uh, the months of really like January, February, right through to like April. I, my rule of thumb is very simple. It's actually, uh, if Northern Hemisphere harvest is on, you wanna be contacting wineries in the Southern Hemisphere. And if Southern Hemisphere harvest is on, you wanna be contacting wineries in the Northern Hemisphere, because it really kind of gives them about a six months uh, uh, time frame to be able to determine what their, their team sizes are. Most wineries that uh, I've ever worked in uh, or even people that apply for roles with Unico Zello, we really have our team sorted really six months out. We're over planners, but you know, and I'm an over planner. So uh, yeah, definitely giving people the, the maximum amount of time to also just respond to you as well. So when you reach out to wineries and it's pretty simple, my approach, would simply be go and find wineries that you like uh, or places where you want to travel to uh, and uh, whip them an email. Uh, don't just send one or two emails to one or two wineries. Send like 10 or 20 uh, and don't keep them to one particular niche. That's another hot tip here as well is um, go bigger than you want to be working in to be honest, because most people want to work in a really cool small winery that's got like a ton of hype around it. Often the hype wineries also just simply don't pay you, um, you know, because the reward is being able to work at a winery that you admire. In my country, in Australia, that's exceptionally illegal. Um, so that's another thing to be mindful of as well, is that in some some wineries, in some, oh, sorry, in some countries, uh, there are specific rules uh, around, uh, I, believe, I believe they're actually called modern, modern slavery rules. But in Australia, for example, 99.9% uh, .9 of the time you're going to get paid, you're going to get paid a, a controlled amount, what we call a ward rate. And in some countries, the, the, how they work the payment. Uh, and also considering you are getting paid, you need to consider things like visas as well. The goal is to get a foot in the door. So uh, my, my approach was actually to go really quite large. I worked at Jacobs Creek uh, for one of my earlier vintages. Um, I learned tons of skills in doing that. That got transferred to every other winery that I've, I've ever been to. But it was certainly not the, the winery that I'd hoped that I would work at one day. Each each their own because there are incredible winemakers that work for that com company. So the, the big wineries, firstly, they typically pay better. Um, and also they train you really well. You don't learn bad habits. Um, they're big for a reason. Um, they tend to be safer, tend to be safer places uh, to work in. You know, smaller wineries don't really observe a lot of occupational health and safety measures. Uh, don't discount the really big ones uh, because you do learn a lot of skills. Uh, how to operate pumps uh, safely is probably a really big one. Um, how to handle ferments in the, in the right way. Uh, once you're sort of in the, the winery, like, yeah, uh, and you're, you're doing uh, you're doing vintage, be really inquisitive. Ask as many questions, be super annoying. Uh, someone's gonna notice you that um, that you're asking a ton and ton of questions and you are very, very uh, engaged and they're going to, to engage with you. And if not, if no one in that company is going to engage with you, then like, especially if you're traveling and you're, you're in a typically wineries in rural areas or agricultural districts, uh, go out to the local wine bars, go out to the local pubs. Winemakers, we love a drink. Uh, we love a good yarn, we love a good story, uh, and we love catching up with our friends and especially surrounding ourselves with wine. 
so that's where you're going to find more of them. Uh, so just surround yourself uh, with the community and do your absolute best to be inquisitive and put yourself uh, forward to them. Because I tell you what, once you've actually got a position, you're in an area and you start to, to, to know who's who in the zoo uh, of any kind of winemaking district, you are you are not going to have as much more difficult problems getting getting roles uh, elsewhere. It's going to be a lot easier. The the wine industry is a little bit clicky sometimes, uh, so you do need to be wary that yeah it is all about who you know sometimes. So just know more people. Uh, you know, it's, it, just make one new friend every day uh, is probably the the biggest um, the biggest tip I've um, uh, ever been given. If you are, this was actually something that worked really well for me once. Uh, and another really hot tip, traveling in a place that I didn't speak the language, that was hard. You do learn, funnily enough, the language, no matter where you are, quite quickly, because you kind of have to. But if you are a bit embarrassed that you don't know how to speak the language and you are trying to go out and you're finding yourself in a, um, in a really a bit of a pickle where you're not really meeting people, they're not really engaging with you uh, over wine, then often during vintage, you'll get purple hands. It's a bit of a courtesy to go, clean your hands off with with some kind of uh, caustic soda, um, which does a really good job cleaning, cleaning all the purple off. Um, don't do that. Uh, don't do that. Go out into a bar and make it kind of like sit at the bar, grab a drink, and they will notice that you have, you have very discolored hands. They're probably going to be inquisitive and they're going to ask, what wine are you working at? And that can be a real icebreaker as well, especially if you're uh, air on the uh, introverted side. Now, going from the opposite angle, so going right through to where the market is, hospitality, that's where I would probably say most people get a start in wine. I mean, we're talking restaurants mainly. The approach here is also very simple. Find a wine-focused venue. Um, I know where I'm from, most of the venues are wine-focused by their nature, but um, certainly if you are in other countries where you know, wine is still a bit of a rarity, I know that can be pretty hard, so just focus on finding a wine-focused venue. Talk to them, see if there's any kind of shifts that you can do. Uh, drop resumes around the place for CVs um, and just let it be known that you're interested in, in working in the industry. Getting a foot in the door is actually the critical thing. So it kind of doesn't matter whether you're not a, um, a, a waiter or a bartender, um, you know, or a som, even a dishy or what we call a yeah, dishwasher or a glassy. Um, as long as you are, once you're in and you are inquisitive and you're asking about wine, people are going to catch on that you're kind of in the wine and they're going to probably show it to you. So that is really key is to, to make it known that, that that is what you are interested in and what you're looking to, to pursue. In terms of hospitality being close to the market, don't discount um, uh, off-premise or what, bottle shops, wine stores, because the dynamics are exceptionally different. I did eight years in wine retail and loved every single minute of it. I still miss it today. It's probably one of my favorite parts of the wine industry is wine retail. You get to see so many wines. Uh, in retail. You get to taste a lot more wines in hospitality and in, in uh, restaurants and bars, but you just don't see the width and breadth and size and scale of the industry as you probably would uh, seeing all the labels on the shelves. And especially if you find yourself in maybe a buying position or you just get to know the local uh, representatives uh, who work in wholesale, they'll come by and often do tastings with you, educational tastings, uh, or even try to sell you more wines. You're going to know who's who in the zoo uh, for wholesale, which can be very, very important uh, for, for the next thing I'm about to tell you about. The other sort of aspect way that you can kind of get into the wine industry is a bit of a, a tougher one, a difficult one. And I did actually think it's worthwhile talking about separately, which is wholesale, uh, which is called sales or marketing and distribution uh, in Australia. It's the dark arts of the wine industry, in my opinion, because your, their, their job is very much business to business. They, they uh, represent wines or wineries and they sell their wines into restaurants and bottle shops, but the actual customer never really gets to see them. Um, you know, their business names aren't really known. Uh, the vernacular and lexicon that they use to sell wine is very different to how uh, you would sell wine to the trade. It's not for everyone. Uh, absolutely true. Uh, the, the dark arts of distribution are for the right person, but for the right person, it can be awesome and lucrative. Uh, and I know there's probably plenty of sales reps that watch this that are probably falling off their chairs thinking, how the hell is it lucrative? The real good reps that really nail it, uh, that are just, they, they live and breathe and uh, yeah, just find themselves in the perfect position. 
uh, are doing very well for themselves. Um, the skill sets that you'll need for that, how do you get involved in it? Mm, bit of a tough one. I don't know how you get a foot in the door per se apart from applying for roles uh, that become available. But I would actually probably enter it via the off trade, so via uh, wine stores, bottle shops, and talk to talk to reps. Um, it is very much a, a transferable skill as opposed to say people are working retail. Yeah, I suppose you get broader retail skills. The world of wine's a little bit different. Same thing with restaurant trade. It's a, you know a pretty good transferable skill to take overseas, but you're still working in restaurants and trade as opposed to in wholesale and sales. Uh, you could come from some real broad backgrounds uh, and and come into wholesale marketing and distribution and do very, very well. Um, it is much more of a numbers game and a logistics game uh, than it is a pitching and selling game, although that is also a very big aspect of it. So yeah, they're the three ways um, that I would, uh, I'd, I'd certainly advise uh, trying to get into the wine industry. If you're in production, go for a big winery, go for a harvest. Ideally, maybe even stay in your own country to begin with. So you've got these skills that are very transferable. You can, you can learn how to operate pumps. You can learn winery cleanliness. You can learn the do's and the don'ts uh, of working in a winery, especially like, yeah, definitely that first vintage uh, is a make or break for a lot of people. If you're doing uh, restaurant and, and off-premise, uh, find a wine-focused venue and also don't write off uh, bottle shops and wine stores. And sales and marketing, just know that if you don't fancy being in front of a customer and you don't fancy getting covered in lees and great mark uh, and working stupid hours for like three, four months of the year, but you would much prefer either office work or, uh, or sales rep work, then there's another whole arm of the industry uh, that is really, really worth getting into. Anyway, I hope that answers a lot of the questions and the comments that we have been getting recently about, you know, how would I get a start in it? If you have further follow-up questions, put in the comments or get in touch with us directly, or actually <clears throat> one of the best places is on the Discord. So there'll be, we always put a Discord link at the bottom of these videos. If you aren't on there, you definitely should be. Uh, it's a community of now we're at about 600 plus uh, and a complete open community, very inclusive of 600 plus uh, wine lovers and trade members uh, from around the world. And another uh, thing I'll link in the description of this video is uh, the there's a Facebook group called Traveling Winemakers Living the Dream. Uh, and that is probably the, the preeminent Facebook group for finding out where harvest positions are, especially at short notice. And so just jumping into there, having a bit of a look, seeing what other people are saying, doing, how they're, they're, they're talking about it and, uh, and engaging can just be helpful in and of itself. So hopefully that's been somewhat helpful. Of course, subscribe if you like it. And hopefully we'll see tons of you guys all getting harvest internships in the near future. <laughs> Cheers.